may be familiar with Black Panther's kinetic shockwave, but do you know how this phenomenon really works? In 1842, Austrian mathematician and physicist Christian Johann Doppler first proposed the theory of the Doppler effect. He learnt that pitch, or frequency, of sound from a moving source varies as it moves towards or away from a stationary observer. Applying this to stars in orbit, he theorised that their light should change colour with their velocities, depending on whether they move towards or away from the Earth. This was experimentally verified for sound in 1845 and for light in 1901. After a few modifications with the theory of relativity, the Doppler effect became a significant tool for astronomy. We can also see the Doppler shift in our daily lives. Like a passing fire engine siren will have a higher pitch when coming towards you and a lower pitch when it moves away. A similar thing happens with a supersonic jet. In the following example, we will consider this to be our sound source. Sound waves are emitted radially outwards in all directions at constant speed. As the velocity of the source is increased, sound waves and their wavefronts, represented by circles, start to group up ahead of the direction of travel and separate behind the direction of travel. At transonic speeds, meaning speeds very close to the speed of sound, wavefronts become grouped so closely that they interfere constructively and produce a shock wave. This is akin to a wall of sound. Once the source reaches supersonic speeds, above the sound barrier, this wall is left behind the source as it travels. Subsequently, a conical shock wave is produced. The formula for calculating the angle of a shock wave is as follows. Recall that shock waves are formed when the source travels faster than the speed of sound. The angle of the shock front relative to the direction of motion depends on its speed. If the object travels at speed v object, the half angle alpha can be calculated as sine alpha equals the speed of sound divided by the speed of the object. The higher the speed, the narrower the cone. Since supersonic shock waves aren't exactly common, we would be more likely to experience the Doppler effect in other ways. We will first consider an observer moving towards a stationary sound source. If the observer moves with speed v0 relative to a noise source, then the apparent speed of the waves changes to v dash equals v plus v0, where v is the speed of the noise source. We can then calculate the observed frequency as follows. We use the equation frequency is equal to wave speed over wavelength, replacing wave speed with our newly calculated relative wave speed and rearrange. Now if the source is moving instead, the spacing between the waves will change, leading to a change in the measured wavelength. If the source moves towards the observer, the wavelength decreases. The opposite is true of a receding source. The speed of the sound is constant throughout, therefore the frequency will change. The observed wavelength and frequency derivation is as follows. Again, we use the equation wavelength is equal to wave speed over frequency and insert our value for wavelength into the equation and rearrange. The same is done for observed frequency. A widespread measurement technique for redshift is via spectroscopy, the analysis of stars' electromagnetic emission spectra. Stars' distinct emission patterns are shifted in wavelength by the constant expansion of the universe. We can analyse these spectra and determine the approximate distance of astronomical bodies like stars or galaxies accordingly. Another application, acoustic Doppler current profiling, is used to create a 3D model of flow rates in rivers or oceans by analysing Doppler shift from sound waves reflected by moving water particles. At least three transducers are required for a 3D model, in this example, four are used. The effect is particularly useful for oceanography and military applications, for example, submarine route plotting. The Doppler effect is around us in many ways, from passing sirens to stars orbiting in our universe. With that in mind, 
We hope you understand more about its applications and can use this video to further your studies in physics.